Next up, Russ and I are going to talk about some Arrow 4K releases and Criterion 4K releases like Wolf of Wall Street, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, and Wally. -E. And if you learned how to sell pens from going to prison, make sure you subscribe to us, like this video, throw us a comment, and call an ambulance because I just had a stroke. The Wolf of Wall Street and Robin Hood Prince of Thieves. Am I wrong in thinking that those are strange releases for Arrow to be putting out? I'm sorry, what's that? Doesn't it seem like these would just be both like Zavi repackagings? Well, the only you reason know? Prince of Thieves doesn't give me that vibe is because Arrow already did uh, Waterworld. Is anybody nostalgic for Kevin Costner? It, it doesn't is surprise Ar me. Arrow least. apparently is. Well, that's what I'm saying. It doesn't surprise me that his output has landed on Arrow. I'm sure Arrow will do great with Prince of Thieves. Really? But, oh, I'm sure they will. They okay. did great with Waterworld. Wrong. Let's talk about Wolf of Wall Street first. And then because I, that that's the one that, I, again, I, I think I'm scratching my head on a little that bit. That one I'm scratching my head on. Interesting that this just wasn't a Zavi release. This is an Arrow release, which, again, Zavi will just take this steelbook that exists, put new packaging around it, and sell it to you. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Whereas Arrow, in this instance, is doing some new features and, you know, all this kind of stuff. So it is an Arrow release. And this is actually coming out a year after it came out in America on 4K. Like, this is UK only. The point of contention here is that this has already been, you know, restored in 4K in America. So this does not appear to be an Arrow original transfer, although they have not specifically said it. God damn it! It says right here, director approved 4K transfer, which, what's Scorsese coming back and doing two approved transfers? Like, he did one and, like, went back to sleep. Look at this thing. <laughs> It does come with two new co commentaries from some critics and some film historian, nobody important to the movie, just some people with opinions. But then when you go to the Blu-ray itself, there's some uh, new interviews with the screenwriter, new interviews with the production designer, a new visual essay on the film, so, and all the archival stuff that, that was there. Why don't you just get the real Jordan Belfort? He's a, I see him doing interviews with people all the time. That's true. He's on like every podcast. He is. Constantly <laughs> talking. My agent slip that manuscript to, to a, a few people in Hollywood, Mark Wahlberg, George Clooney, Brad Pitt, and Leo, and a bidding war started between Leo and Brad Pitt. Here's the packaging that it's coming in, which... I like it. It's what, they, what they're calling a luxury wallet case. <laughs> and that's why I like it, because they have the original artwork on that box, and that box looks sweet. As long as you nail the box, I don't care what stupid inner packaging you do. It can be a wallet... But, you know, sell me this pen. It could have been a pen. You know, I don't yeah. care. As long as that outer box is rigid and looks good. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that. Limited edition luxury wallet package, American excess credit card, a business card, a Stratton Oakmont banknote, and what appears to be a bag of Coke. Um, also, is it real cocaine? It might be. Because it's awesome. It's also got a 60-page booklet right here that slides on the other side. And then this art on the inside is reversible. So anyway, great film. Strange arrow release to me. Um, not too much new. Maybe the transfer will be different, but probably not. Um, there's also a Blu-ray only version of this in case you didn't want the 4K. And this is going to come in at around 41 bucks for the 4K package with shipping. 35 bucks bad. for blue. That's not bad. I already pre-ordered it. I think I might. I'm not as enthusiastic about Wolf of Wall Street as most people, but I still think it's an awesome movie. Oh, it's, it's awesome. And no, but at, now that I see the actual packaging, I think I will pick this up. Because it's awesome. Robin Hood's getting a lot bigger treatment than uh, Wolf of Wall Street. So Robin Hood's coming out November 18th. Again, I, I kind of thought this was a wild announcement, but you're a little bit more on board than me. So the last time this came out on Blu-ray was 13 years ago, and it came with the extended cut. That's what came out on Blue, the extended cut. Now this one is arriving with a 4K restoration, Dolby Vision, theatrical, and extended. So you're getting the theatrical experience for anyone that loved the theatrical version and the extended version, and both of them are getting a 4K restoration. So how about that? That's not possible. Russ already pre-ordered while I've he was sitting here. He movie. just reached yeah, off and pre-ordered. It's got two audio commentaries with the director and Kevin Costner, another commentary with Morgan Freeman and Christian Slater and writers. New making of Robin Hood multi-part documentary featuring all the cast and crew, archival 1991 documentary hosted by Pierce Brosnan. The Earl of Huntington, Robin of Loxley, Robert Fitzsooth and Robert Hood. But to centuries of storytellers, he is simply Robin Hood. <laughs> Archival interviews with Costner, Freeman, Mary Elizabeth, Master Antonio, Slater, and Alan Rickman. Again, rest in peace. Now, you're also going to get 
a live performance at Irish Slane Castle from Brian Adams singing Everything I Do, Day. I Do It For You. I Day wish, one purchase. I, wish, I know I interrupted you, but holy shit, that's the most exciting thing I've ever heard. I, uh, cheers. I just wish it was the original video. What's this live performance shit? I want the original video. I don't give a shit what he'd like. He took out my eye. Limited edition packaging, reversible sleeve, 60-page booklet, two double-sided posters, and six double-sided art cards. And there's four different options for that ass. The first one's going to be your regular 4K release. Then you're going to get the Steelbook version with different box art, and the Steelbook art is different as well. All the stuff inside is the same. Different outer artwork. Different outer artwork and a different poster. Then there's the Blu-ray version, which is just the same thing as the re regular. It's just Blu-ray instead. And then finally, just a Steelbook version, which has the blue and 4K inside. And it's the Steelbook art that comes with the Steelbook uh, Deluxe version. Yeah, I don't even know too much about this movie other than at the time it was released, I just knew this movie just isn't for me. Like, So I don't think I ever even cared to see it. I was a fool. And for um, reference, we were like seven years old. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I mean, we, and I did the same thing. I never watched this. No, I, never. Cared. I don't think the Brian Adams song did it any favors. I saw a lot of people that are excited about it, yeah. and it also seems like the previous Blu-ray was in sore need of an update. So all you Robin Hood fans, jump on it. It was good to be seen. Another pretty shocking announcement this week: Criterion is partnering with Disney, and they're announcing their 4K release of Wally. <laughs> I was shocked to see this because you, you know me, I'm not a big animation guy, but I dug this movie a lot when I saw it. It is really good. It's out November 22nd. I did think it was pretty shocking news when I saw this announced um, that Disney partnered with them just because, you know, I felt like Disney had sort of given up on physical media. Like, so now are they giving some of their catalog to Criterion? It's great. Are they trying to just like jump in and you know, like what else is after this? And is now, it just Pixar? Is it other Disney movies? Is it live action Disney? And movies? not only and, that, you're just saying Disney owns everything. They do. So it's yeah, like Criterion now have the potential to release basically anything. What are you talking about? Why not? And Wally -E is the perfect one. If they're going to pick a Pixar movie for Criterion, it definitely has to be Wally. -E. And the other thing about the Pixar movies too is that a lot of them have been released in 4K. They all share the same kind of art, sort of theme, so they all kind of fit together. Mm -hmm. But what I what I was reading is that most of those have just been like these upscales, which is really easy to do with animation. Toy where, Story was like that, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Whereas this here is a new 4K master coming from the director, Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos Track. So this this could be, you know, like a, a revelation for some people that, you know, love Pixar, love Wally, and now we're gonna see what Criterion can do with I'm one excited of them. It's pretty for cool. This. I'm excited for this yeah, release. It's I'll cool. be picking it up. I love this art. I, I think this too. art's awesome, the way the box looks. One of the detractors that I've read in some of the comments and stuff about this release isn't necessarily that um, it's Wally -E or, or what the movie itself was. People are like, now we're going to start getting this boutique label prices for Disney movies at like $35, $40 a pop. And if they're going to really start cranking them out, that kind of is a bummer. So I don't oh know. What, what are your thoughts on that? My thoughts are, do you know the history of Disney and home video releases? So before they go back into the Disney vault for years to come, don't miss your chance to own these magical Disney videos before they disappear. They fuck with people all the time with their vault releases. I mean, they were they were the first ones to ever do that in any physical media uh, way yeah. with the VHSs in the 80s and all that. They're coming out of the vault and then they're disappearing with those clamshell cases. And oh, whatnot. yeah. Yeah. I mean, Disney is notorious for fucking with your means of seeing movies they own. It's exciting that yeah. Criterion has access to them. Disney, you're assholes. Like, who would be upset about this? What do you want the Pirates of the Caribbean releases to keep happening with for titles like Wally? -E? They put no care into it. It's exciting that Criterion has this. It wasn't me that said that, Russ. Don't yell at me. I'm mad at you, <laughs> Matt. I don't care. I'm mad at the messenger. Just hearing that Criterion's doing this, we know that they are on top of it with their transfers, this could really be incredible. Mm -hmm. And this is the first time we're going to probably see a true 4K restoration of an animated film that Disney has put out. Now, it's, it's, a, it's a current film. It's not like an older one, but still, still. it's like, wow, what are they going to be able to do? It's pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. So bravo, Criterion. Bravo. And one other company I want to give a shout out to is Kino, even though they you know greased up my freaking discs. <laughs> Hopefully this one isn't greased up, Kino. You know, talks greasy. They're talking greasy is <laughs> brick. So this is out later this year. There's no official date for it yet, but Kino is putting it out. 
And before Ryan Johnson ruined Star Wars, he put Brick out. He wrote and directed this movie, which I freaking love. They put this out in blue like a year ago. Like they're the company <laughs> they that did. put it out. So they already picked it up. So great job that they did that. Thanks for the um, double dip. Thanks for the double dip. Now, a year later, they're double dipping on you. I've only ever owned this on DVD. So I am I never went to the blue. And I'm kind of glad that I dragged my feet on it because now I'm super excited to, to pick this up. And, you know, Kino kind of probably isn't. Maybe they're going to grab some new stuff. I don't know. But let's just say they carry over what they already had. There was a really awesome commentary on it from the director, Ryan Johnson, who just really goes into everything and a lot of really great detail. So um, I, I think that's a really you know great feature to kind of bleed over. And then just about like 30 minutes of deleted stuff, some extended scenes, you know, nothing too crazy. But yeah, I mean, I'll just be happy with a good transfer and an excellent movie, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, it's probably my second favorite Ryan Johnson film. Oh, yeah. What's your first? Uh, the first 20 minutes of Last Jedi. Fair enough. Nice. I never finished it, but that first 20 minutes was hysterical. As soon as I saw, nah, dude, as soon as I saw Luke chuck that lifesaver, I could, uh, dude, it was so funny to me. Cause not only was it visually hilarious, but I could just in my head hear all, every Star Wars fan across the globe screaming. <laughs> and then they're like, and <gasps> then the end of the scene, yeah, yeah, then the end of the scene with Luke like milking some alien or something. I was like, I've seen enough, but this is brilliant. <laughs> Number one, thank you, Ryan Johnson. <laughs> thank you, Ryan Johnson. Nah, Brick's good. I like Brick. <laughs> 